where risk enters the world stage, Paul Slovic follows. What began as a childhood obsession with Major League Basketball statistics led to a career of calculating risk. He's consulted for the EPA, FDA, the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, and, and the Secret Service, after Ronald Reagan was shot in the 1980s, they became concerned about how to make decisions about the many threats on the president's life. Slovic is a world leader in decision making, and his work highlights a fatal flaw in the way we all make choices. In the 1970s, theories of the global economy rested on an assumption that when we make decisions, we rationally choose what benefits us most, seems sensible enough. But common sense was being turned on its head at a psychology lab in Eugene, Oregon, where Slovic had created a mock casino game. His gamblers were choosing a big payoff over terrible odds, betting bigger as the pot grew and odds fell. But when Slovic added a second possible wager, a small payoff with good odds, gamblers reversed, suddenly favoring odds over a big jackpot. That was shocking to economists because it showed that preferences weren't stable and consistent. Slovic upended economics, revealing that we make choices irrationally. We decide what's best for us by how the choice is presented. Slovic says it's a quirk of evolution. Our brains evolved in a simpler time. Critical thought took time and energy in this survival-oriented world, so our emotions, which deal in context, stepped in. Quick and reactive in sizing up a given situation, they let us make many decisions in a day. But today, there's a dark side to what was once an evolutionary advantage, especially when big numbers are involved. Whether dollars or human lives, our emotions can't handle the math. If there's one life at risk, it's very uh, important for us to you know, protect that life or rescue that person. So 20, 100, or a million lives at risk should make us that much more concerned, right? It doesn't. In fact, Slovic's research shows the opposite is true. Take his study on genocides like Rwanda in the 90s. 800,000 people were killed in a period of 100 days, and the world was tipped off in advance that it was going to happen. Even with troops on the ground begging to intervene, the UN didn't, though the security risk was small. Slovic's research shows that the unfathomable number of lives in jeopardy helped deter assistance. And if you're skeptical, consider this. Slovic set up an experiment inviting people to support a starving child pictured in an advertisement. People donated, but then he added numbers to the flyer. Next to her face, we put the statistics of the fact that there were millions of people starving in her region, and we thought that would boost the donations. It had the opposite effect. The donations dropped in half. Stunning revelations like this underlie an uncomfortable refrain in Slovic's research. When numbers grow, our brains simply can't process the scale. We become numb. There's no reason that that life should become less important just because other people are also at risk. But that's how we operate. Slovic's research scientifically implicates irrational decision-making in how we respond to the grim projections of climate change with inaction, and how during the pandemic, preventative measures fall off as the death toll rises. The good news is we're not powerless to curb the effects. Awareness is the cure. Slovic has committed his life to spreading it. We have to deal with uh, these things, and it starts with decisions. It involves recognizing that our feelings are useful, but we also have to temper those feelings with logic and reason and pay attention to scientific thinking and you know, other careful analysis, as well as how we feel about things. <laughs>